Welcome to Grueling Truth Show, Real Deal. I'm one of the hosts, Josh Benjamin. My co-host, Patrick Miller, is also alongside with me. This show has various sports topics, and our show is available on our website, the www.thegruelingtruth.net. We're also on other, uh, other pieces of media, such as Google Music, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and actually we have an app, the Grueling Truth Sports Network. You can subscribe to our show and other shows by The Grilling Truth, and so you can listen to our show anytime you like. So you can follow us on Twitter. Um, personally, mine uh, is at CoachJB4, and Patrick's is at Miller underscore Patrick4. We also have our own Real Deal TGT Twitter handle, and you can find us on Facebook uh, by searching Real Deal, and you can uh, obviously be in our group or uh, like our page. We have ton- tons of things to talk about on both of those formats. So tonight's topic, um, Actually, before I get to that, I want to congratulate, uh, because we haven't been on the air for a while, uh, admittedly, and maybe that's good for the grueling truth, but I will say uh, congratulate uh, my co-host, Patrick Miller, on being a father. He hasn't, uh, We haven't had a show since uh, the birth of his son, but I just want to congratulate Patrick. Nice job, man. It's awesome feeling to uh, have a son and or even uh, a daughter, uh, for that matter, but uh, awesome feeling to be a parent, that's for sure. It is. It's something you can't really describe unless you you go through it, obviously. And it's been a tiring, exhausting, awesome thrill ride for the last eight weeks or so. I believe he's turning eight um, eight weeks this Friday. So definitely a, a awesome experience. It's something that obviously I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Um, you know, and and to many more years and watching him grow. Yes, I, I agree with all of that. Uh, I had the same feelings and still do to this day with my uh, now three-year-old son. So um, congratulations again. And uh just wanted to point that out because uh, that was one of the reasons uh, we weren't uh, be able to get on, uh, but others as well. But I digress. Let's go into our topic tonight. Uh, it's kind of some subtopics, but we're going to start out with, of course, what's going on in the NBA right now, which is going to start the off-season free agency period. And that is, uh, where is LeBron James going to go? Or is he going to go anywhere for that matter? And uh, I'm just going to start out by saying, uh, personally, before we jump into the logistics, I think if someone can get to Cleveland, if Cleveland can somehow pull something off, or they can get another guy to come to Cleveland, he will stay, and he will stay there for the rest of his career. But if they cannot do that, I think that uh, he's going to go somewhere smart, Smart plays to stay in the East, but he can definitely join some West teams. But Patrick, what um, so let's start out with first of all, uh, LeBron James and whether he's going to go West or East, uh, in your opinion, and what teams do those go with? What teams would would he be considering? Okay, so if he goes out West, obviously, I believe number one first and foremost would be the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, the the reasons being. Uh, one is family. Um, he owns property out there, obviously. Spends most of his off season out there uh, working out, uh, different things like that. Um, and then, obviously, it'll take his – I believe he's thinking long-term in, in regards to his brand, um, the LBJ brand. Uh, and L.A. is – obviously, you, you can't really get a bigger market than, than Los Angeles when it comes to life after basketball. Um, and, and when it comes to that, um, L.A. also has the most cap space um, to be able to sign not only him but another max contract. And if LeBron or one of these other guys that could potentially come to L.A. would agree to um, take a little bit of a pay cut, as we saw when Kevin Durant went to Golden State, they could get potentially three um, superstars uh, out at L.A. And, and kind of form a super team. That, that can compete against um, Golden State. So that's that's kind of my take. Um, if he doesn't go to L.A., number two would be the Rockets. And I don't really see him really considering anywhere else besides L.A. or Houston um, with those two teams. If we're just talking about guys on the court, would be giving them the best chance to potentially win and, and win now and win for the longevity of his his career, however long that may be. Okay, well, I uh, 
a lot of things come to mind when you uh, speak about both those teams. First of all, the Lakers uh, have a historic uh, tradition of winning championships. Um, and obviously there are points of interest for LeBron to go to L.A. and be a part of that. I think it's huge for Magic Johnson and what his position is right now at the Lakers. If he does not get LeBron ever, uh, that will be a huge uh, tarnish of, of Magic's legacy as – uh, being in front office, kind of like Michael Jordan right now. Obviously, he's considered one of the greatest players, if not the greatest of all time. And him in the in the front office has been, to be honest, quite terrible. And uh, um, I think this would definitely uh, plunge Magic Johnson's full legacy to be able to be a great player, but also be great in the front office. Um, this would that would definitely help uh, both their cases. If, uh, like you said, getting the max deals available to bring in a couple guys. Um, with the Rockets, I just think that I, – I think that's a very good possibility. Um, I think regardless of if he goes to the Lakers or the Rockets, I think the Warriors are still going to be tough for years to come if they don't break up. Um, I just think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be tough for either team, Lakers, Spurs, Rockets, uh, the Pelicans, the Blazers, whoever, to, to have that – to have that tough um, go, but um, but as far as the East goes, Patrick, what what are considerations there? Uh, in the East, I, I only see I I see him considering obviously number one and first and foremost him staying in Cleveland. Uh, it's his home. It's where he's from. He, he I mean he's the king there. I mean he's the king of the NBA obviously, but there's no bigger figure probably in in Northeast America. Um, than LeBron James, and especially when we're talking about Cleveland, I think first and foremost that's where he'll stay. And <clears throat> obviously we all know that LeBron holds more uh, uh, pull in, in Cleveland in regards to just being a player. I believe he's definitely uh coach. I think he's general manager. Um, and if he could own the team, I, I think he would do that as well. I consider LeBron – in Cleveland, basically Jerry Jones, um, in, in regards to how the teams ran. And so if he does stay in Cleveland, he's going to be calling the shots. Uh, he'll be he'll be the one, you know, kind of saying who he wants. Um, they would definitely have to make some serious moves, kind of what they did at the NBA uh, uh, trade deadline where they basically overhauled their whole entire roster and, and switched it for the second half of the year. But um, – for him to stay in Cleveland, which I believe is number one in the East, they would they would definitely have to uh, get Kawhi Leonard somehow, um, which he has he has come out and publicly stated that he wants to be traded from the San Antonio Spurs, or or they would have to sign Paul George, and it's no guarantee that that Paul George really leaves um, the Oklahoma City Thunder, although you know everybody has him going to LA as well. I think LeBron has pretty good persuasive and uh, pretty good track record and basically trying to convince anybody to play with him because if you play with LeBron James, you're automatically going to become a winner. You're going to compete for a championship and you're going to become a better player. I mean, that's just proven over his, over his career. So, so first and foremost, he goes to, he goes to Cleveland or he stays in Cleveland. Uh, my second option would be, and the smartest option would be the Philadelphia 76ers. They have such young talent. They have Joel Embiid. They have uh, Ben Simmons. They have good role players. You have Rodney Covington. Uh, you have Sarge, who's a big power forward. Um, they would have to unload uh, J.J. Redick as he is $26 million against their cap space, which – that shouldn't be an issue. They just don't re-sign him and pick up his option for next year. Uh, but again, and we have we have some up-to-date information with the NBA draft going on. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers also would need to trade Jared Bayless, um, and that would get them eight more. That would get them to the $32 million range. Max contracts 35, um, and they would get the rest of that from not signing one of their draft picks, which then in return they would receive cash and $1.7 million to get them there. And I believe if LeBron goes to Philly with all the young talent, um, he has pretty, uh, I would say, cruise control to the finals for the next five to six, six years. So I believe it's, it's Cleveland number one or, or Philadelphia number two. 
Yeah, and I uh, I think that Cleveland obviously has a play for lots of reasons. I agree with you there. Definitely, uh, if they get another person, like I said before, uh, I think he would stay. Uh, I think they have a decent nucleus, some young guys. Um, got some experienced guys as well, obviously, with J.R. Smith uh, and Kyle Corbett, those guys right there. Um, I think the other one, though, I think I think the Celtics, they have, they have a lot to offer. Um, first of all, obviously, they'd have to trade uh, Kyrie, which would be <laughs> almost kind of like the Isaiah Thomas deal where he's you know, there for a season or less than that and then gets traded. Um, but I think that with Brad Stevens being an amazing coach and obviously the Celtics tradition, uh, I think that would be a great fit. I, I, he's around some young guys, some guys that are actually going to play hard, not that Cleveland did not play hard or any other team that he'd go to uh, not play hard. But I think those guys right there would definitely um, go under his wing, and he would show them how to play the game and give back to the game possibly. Obviously, they're going to be very good because they already are, and uh, that only makes them better, obviously, having him. Um, having a coach like Brad Stevens, uh, nothing against the coaches that uh, LeBron's had in the past, but nothing like what Jordan had with Phil Jackson. Um, same thing with Kobe. And so uh, I think that that's the other landing spot in the East if he does go somewhere. I, I do think Sixers are in play. Um, I just don't know what's going to happen with the GM and what that situation, what happened there with leaking mm-hmm. some information. But uh, mm-hmm. I think that uh, <laughs> definitely Cleveland and then one of those two Sixers are Celtics. But yeah, I, uh, go ahead. Yeah, with the 76ers, I, I think in, in – Good thing you mentioned that. Obviously, with the with the GM there and and his burner phones and and fake Twitter accounts and and things like that, they they he uh, he resigned and uh, LeBron James can basically, if he goes to Philadelphia, what what the NBA analysts are saying is that he can handpick his own GM. So again, he would become the Jerry Jones of of the Philadelphia 76ers and um, you know being able to kind of handpick his his general manager to, to kind of oversee and, and basically put in place kind of what, what LeBron wants. So um, that's, that's definitely probably an intriguing uh, uh, piece, but I just don't, I don't think Philadelphia from a longevity standpoint and, and from his business perspective is a big enough market um, than, than what LA or, or Cleveland has to offer. So if I asked you right now your professional opinion or whatever you want to happen, whether it's what you want or your professional opinion, where is LeBron in the 2018-19 season? Uh, I believe LeBron is a Los Angeles Laker in the 2018-19 season. That is that is what I believe. Um, is there anybody else with him? Any superstars uh, moving? Yeah, oh yeah. Um I believe that uh I believe that either the starting lineup for the Lakers next year would be Alonzo Ball at the one, uh playing point guard. I believe they put um Kyle Kuzma at the at the two unless um actually I, I retract that statement. I believe they will have uh kind of LeBron playing that two three hybrid spot. I believe Kawhi Leonard or Paul George, whichever one they get, um, fills in that 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 other kind of hybrid uh, two three spot, and then um, round it off with Kyle Kuzma, and uh, then you have I believe DeAndre Jordan will will walk across the hallway, and and be their center. Um, the reasons I believe that is if you look at LeBron James's history. Um, in regards to point guards and centers, it fits his MO perfectly. Uh, he's typically when he's won his championships, he's never had a really a really dominant center, and he's never really had a good point guard. Um, he's just had solid players there. If you think back when he won with Miami, um, if you can name the two point guards, which obviously we could, it's a uh, uh, point guard out of Cleveland State, and then you have Mario Chalmers, who – who knows where they're at right now, um, or his point guards, and then obviously his center um, in, in Miami was was I, I couldn't even tell you to be honest. I, I just know that Chris Bosh played the four, and so he just needs somebody to rebound, which was he was missing in in, in Cleveland, 
and, and he needs a point guard that's going to be a pass-first point guard, which is Lonzo Ball. With that, um, Again, he just needs somebody to get it out, get it on a break, and get it over to him so he can play off the ball and kind of do, do his thing. So uh, that's where I believe he is. Um, again, it's him, Kawhi, or Paul George, and then, and then DeAndre Jordan. Um, so I, kinda, I, I think that's where he goes. I think it's the best choice for his family. I think it's the best choice for him. He gets his max contract. He's in L.A. He has the, the championships. I, I just The only downside is he has to compete in the West. He's got to get through Houston. He's got to get through the Warriors. Um, there, you know, there's a lot of a lot of good teams in the West that he'll have to go through. But I, I think he wants to embrace that challenge because basically throughout his whole career, um, his legacy has been he's had a cakewalk through the East. And I, I just think that this is the time for him to say, you know what, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take on a challenge. I'm going to go to the West. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. He, LeBron has all well, one more, one more year on his contract. Isn't it correct? Yeah, he, yeah. he can opt out. He can out. opt out right now. Okay, Correct. so um, here's what's going to happen. Not, here's what I want to happen. Um, Kawhi Leonard also has that same deal. He has a um, uh, player option for next year, okay? So I think, I think LeBron stays one more year. I, I think he um, gets Kawhi Leonard to go to Cleveland, okay, on a, on a trade, obviously, and then – both those players, one, LeBron James is done with his contract. Two, Kawhi Leonard has the option to opt out since they'll keep that contract. He won't want to restructure it because him and LeBron are talking. They're talking because they're going to join the Houston Rockets in the 2019-2020 season, and there's going to be a, a, a foursome down there in Houston that's going to put a wrecking ball on, on the Warriors, in my opinion, which wow. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, <clears throat> is that likely? Probably not. But uh, it, it could it could happen. It could. So it it could definitely happen. I never even I I never really considered the fact of of both of them even um you know hanging or uh, I'm sorry opting out um you know reuniting in Cleveland kind of running through the through the East and then like you said you know opting out and uh, then Kawhi going somewhere Jimmy together. Went. A ring chaser at that point, since he would be on his third team in three years. But yep. uh, the other option um, is the New Jersey Nets, uh, or Brooklyn Nets, I should say. Um, they uh, they opened up two two big spots. Obviously, Dwight Howard isn't the player he used to be, and he's been on as many teams as I've uh, had hamburgers today. So, um, mm-hmm. so I think that. Uh, <laughs> You never know there. Uh, that guy's got a bunch of money. Um, two max contracts are available uh, for next season, not, not 2018-19, but the, the 19-20 season for um, mm-hmm. Brooklyn. So we'll see what happens there. But I think uh, I think we really need to see some things moving around. I know people may uh, not like that. It's, it's That's more new school than old school. But uh, I know um, at some point very soon, whether it's this show uh, or the next show, we will be talking about super teams and uh, how that's been throughout the NBA for its entirety through since the NBA has been created. But um, but I think that having some flexibility in their contracts, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, uh, I'm, I'm honestly not a big fan of Paul George as a player. I think he was great with Indiana. Um, he was a hard-nosed guy. Uh, people loved him in Indianapolis, and uh, Pacer fans loved him. When he moved to Oklahoma City, he – he kind of got the mellowitis. Uh, I mean, mellowitis. I mean, Carmelo Anthony's uh, type of play, where uh, he will score, he'll shoot, and uh, the defensive side uh, is non-existent. And uh, I just hope that he gets back to something like that, so he can be considered an elite player. Not that he's not considered right now. It's just I think he's uh, not taken <laughs> uh, his level of play higher each year. And I think this year he kind of he stepped back a little bit, joining. Russell Westbrook and uh, and Mello in Oklahoma City, but you never know, and that's a very uh, good option um, for LA and LeBron and those guys, like you mentioned, they're starting five there. Um, both are West teams. We both have. Uh, well, I guess I have a East team for the first year. I, I guess I got a two-year option. I guess is what I did with that. But um, I think that 
wherever LeBron goes, uh, I think we both can agree that he's going to contend for a title wherever he goes. Uh, one, I think that no matter where he goes, whether he stays in Cleveland or uh, goes somewhere else, his legacy is only going to get better, in my opinion. Now, will people tarnish it when uh, he decides to go somewhere else? I mean, maybe. And that that's probably a, a talk for a different day, but I, I think <laughs> no matter what, and I think Colin Coward said this, that uh, we're talking about the greatest of all time, the GOAT. Uh, he was already talking about <laughs> – they were already talking about LeBron James being the GOAT when he won his second ring in Miami. So um, that speaks volumes, especially because Jordan was 6-0 and uh, in the finals. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's tough to say. I mean, LeBron basically holds the NBA in the palm of his hand, and, and whatever move he makes, people are – there's going to be a trickle effect um, in regards to, to players deciding to opt out, to be traded. Teams are going to either hit the panic button or, you know, hold on to some pieces. You know, it just all – it all kind of depends. I, I think, it, uh, you know, Cleveland's kind of the one, you know, that has the most to lose. I mean, obviously not not in regards to – you know, Paul George leaves Oklahoma City, okay, that that's fine. They still have Russell Westbrook, and they still have Superstar. I mean, LeBron James and leaves Cleveland, I mean, w- w- where do you go? If you're Cleveland, where do you, what do, you do? Where, where do you go? I mean, you, you literally go from top of the east to, to literally the bottom. Um, there's no other team that could lose a guy and then literally have that much of, of a of a down uh, downgrade. I mean, they just don't have anybody else. There's Kevin Love. I mean, that's that that's going to be your next best player. And it, as good as Kevin Love is, I I mean, he can't carry a team. So I I think, like I said, Le, LeBron makes his decision June 29th on what he's going to do in regards to opt out or opt in, and then the pieces of the puzzle and every other team will. We'll play catch up from there on out. Agreed. Uh, yeah, the pieces will start falling once he uh, makes that decision for sure. Yeah, so, but now that Kawhi has announced that he's he's getting he he wants to be traded, I think I think LeBron is way more interested in Kawhi Leonard than he would be Paul George. Kawhi Leonard's just as skilled as, as Paul George, uh, and Kawhi Leonard gives LeBron James a all defensive player that he just wouldn't see in Paul George to where if they do come face-to-face with the Golden State Warriors, which I'm assuming wherever LeBron goes, they're going to come face-to-face with the Golden State Warriors sooner than later, whether it's in the Western Conference Finals or in the Finals. It gives somebody that LeBron can defend one and and Kawhi can defend the other uh, and, you know, just kind of take some pressure off of him him defensively, um, which I think people skip over LeBron kind of took a back seat defensively in the playoffs um, because he had to, I mean, he had to, he had to hold the bearing of, of scoring and bringing Kawhi, not only will he get the additional scoring and an additional playmaker, but he'll get, you know, an all defensive player, which is, is huge um, when it comes to facing the Golden State Warriors. Cause if you could stop the Warriors from exploding on you and scoring 120 points, then, then you put yourself in a good position to win. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, just kind of touch on where LeBron's going or maybe staying. Uh, I bet a lot of business owners in the Cleveland area are begging, praying, uh, all the above and more to hope that LeBron stays in Cleveland um, just because of the businesses and things going on in Cleveland now because he's there. Um, <laughs> it it will crash the economy and in Cleveland, if he leaves, and that's probably another topic for a different day, but um, that that's <laughs> huge as well. I mean, I know he can't think about things like that, but uh, that's probably got to wear on somebody that caliber of person as far as the celebrity status and how that can uh, affect not just your family, obviously, or the franchise, but the small business, business owners or even large business owners in that area. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 100%. And- like I said, that's why I said, I mean, Cleveland just has has so much to lose. And, and with LeBron leaving, you know, superstar leaves L.A., L.A. still still thriving. And, you know, Kobe retires or, 
you know, whoever leaves L.A., it, it, you know, on to the next one, and, and it's L.A. You know, they, they still thrive. So the New York Knicks in, in, in New York, I mean, it's going to continue to thrive. New York's not missing a beat without the Knicks being good. Now the NBA would like the, the Knicks to be good, obviously, with the, with the uh, history franchise there, but there's a lot of – a lot to lose in Cleveland. That's that's definitely that's definitely a, a topic for sure. So, um, well, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Patrick. No, I I just I just <clears throat> the only other um, um, place that that I think the LeBron could go and and even Vegas is is <clears throat> considering and what you brought up would be the the Brooklyn Nets and. And that's just due to their due to their cap space and um, LeBron and obviously Jay Z is is part owner of the the Nets and and has some stock there. So um, you know he could hook up with Jay Z and and he could and Brooklyn is a huge market, um, especially for him. And he could bring Kawhi with him there, and they could kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together in Brooklyn and stay in the East and dominate there um, for sure. If he stays in the East, regardless where he goes that team will be in the NBA Finals. I'm not as confident saying that if he goes out west. Yeah, I agree with that point um, wholeheartedly. Um, it's the, the fun of free agency periods and people who can <laughs> opt out of their contract, multiple ass, or multiple uh, stars that can opt out at the same time or demand trades. Um, a lot of good stuff and a lot of good talk uh, for people like us. Uh, in the media that can can kind of uh, throw out these scenarios and <laughs> whether they are ridiculous, kind of maybe like mine, and and more formative and, and probably likely uh, like yours. But I I think that uh, it brings out the spirit and the people that um, fans, uh, the front office obviously, players, um, their families. I think it <laughs> brings us all to kind of a, a talking point of what, what could happen, what's going to happen, and then obviously what actually happens. So uh, good stuff, Patrick. Um, I think that uh, we definitely have to give a shout-out to our uh, our sponsor, MyBookie AG. If you go on our website, net, you can click on the banner, uh, MyBookie, and uh, place your bets there. Uh, don't bet on, on, on my uh, way of thinking with where LeBron and Kawhi is going to go for those two years, but you might want to bet on Patrick if that's available, but my book EAG on our website, the Um Also on our website, you can definitely check out tons of different shows, whether it's boxing or NBA or MLB going on right now, obviously, or even uh, fantasy football. They're already talking about that. So a lot of different uh, storylines, stories going on that uh, we have tons of great writers and, and podcasters on our website, the You can also find us on Spreaker, uh, Spreaker I'm sorry, Stitcher, uh, Google Music, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, Flipboard, all those different medias. Definitely uh, check out our app, the Grilling Truth Sports Network, for those iPhone users in the App Store. Um, you can listen to any of our shows at any time. So um, for my co-host, Patrick Miller, this is Josh Benjamin. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, just like always, be real with what you say. <laughs>